welcome YouTube. The video you're about to see is a reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. Now you may notice that I'm doing certain things with my hands. I am not making any secret hand signs or gestures. When one is doing public speaking, there's only so many things you can do with your hands. You can fold them, maybe put them on your hips, dangling lifelessly at your sides, put them in your pockets, hold them like this, whatever it is. I'm not making any type of signaling gestures, unless I do this, which means shaka. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only, entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Thanks and enjoy. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Coral Blade Grotto broadcast. Uh, this is another reaction video. Reaction video. And, you know, I must say I was a little bit hesitant to make another reaction video because of what happened with uh, Russell J. Gould and Rachel Dara Prince going through YouTube and trying to get a copyright strike against my channel. Uh, you know, because I want to keep my YouTube channel, of course. But it worked out. Uh, you know, try as they might. You know, the, the correctness is going to come whether you like it or not. So, it is what it is. But this particular reaction is going to be regarding another website that was sent to me. And this website, you know, I, I really did take it to heart that I wanted to really take a critical look at it because this is one of those websites that's selling Colin David Iphen Wayne Colin Miller's book. So while you enjoy the the view of the sunset here for a couple more seconds, I'm gonna phase this out and go over to the location of the David Wynn Miller book site. So you see here it's DavidWynnMillerBook.com. And what we're doing here is a couple different things. The first thing is looking for correct sentence structure knowledge. Whoever made this site, do they have closure on the grammar? I.e., do they have a position with which to make any type of correct sentence structure claim? Are they authorized? And by authorized, I mean, do they have the knowledge to be an author and claim authority over their grammar? Because if they show no proof of a correct grammar performance, then the answer is no, they don't. So we see, it says, welcome to daywinmiller.com. Here you will find essential tools to get started on your road of freedom with quantum language, parse, syntax, correct sentence structure. Wow. They don't even have the name correct. But it's, uh, so far, nothing but adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, plain English, Fiction babble, fictitious conveyance of grammar. Printable quick reference wallet cards. Ah, this was uh, David's business card. He sent me two of these with the, the book that he sent me. Now let's just take a look at the card. We have a colon space, David Eiferwood. Colon space, planet potentiary. Colon space, U, period, N, period, space, sovereign. <coughs> This is not correct. Of the, of the, of the, this abbreviation, U period, M period, in order for it to be a correct abbreviation, it would have to be colon, tied up against the U, no space, so it means for the, because every correct sentence structure starts with a cause, for the U period, hyphen, N period, hyphen, sovereign, period. That's the correct way to write it. This puts the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. 
especially with no hyphen there. So we have for the or of the plenipotentiary judge, comma, and then we have space, and then we have colon, and then no space in between the colon and the ambassador. So that makes absolutely no sense. And ambassador is a vowel in front of a consonant, which means no. It's a particle of negation. And then we have postmaster, comma, and then, wow. Yes, none of this is correct. And then we have excessive spacing between the colon and this. So it says, of the flag, of the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. And then you would have to have a verb there. Or else the mathematical interface is voided. And it doesn't end on an authority. So to give you an example, ladies and gentlemen, a correct sentence structure mathematically certified would be for the facts, of the facts, are, with the facts, of the facts, with the facts, by the facts. A shortened version of that would be for the facts, of the facts, are, with the facts, by the facts. This says, if you read it backwards, it says, with a contract postal corporation venue of the contracting persons with the correct sentence structure of the flag. It makes no sense. There's no cause. There's no authority. There's no verb of thinking in there. There's no full stop. Uh, particles of negation in some of the facts. For example, contracting has the word contra in it as well as the word, the particle ing. Both mean no. And again, in contract, we have contra. So, well, I'm not even going to get into this. <laughs> Look for yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Look for missing hyphens in the compound facts. Look for no colons to position the tilde FRCP. What is FRCP? There's no abbreviation there. If it was abbreviation, it would have to be colon tilde F period hyphen R period hyphen C period hyphen P period hyphen tilde 2 6 hyphen tilde E comma. That's how it would be written correctly. But it's not. So this is all adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. Not to mention the particles negation and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, that's not this, this website. This website didn't write that. David Wood Miller did. So then we have all this adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun stuff. Uh, let's see. All you need to have package. What's that? Let's take a look at that. You get a constitution, a citizen's rule book. And a copy of David's book. <laughs> I don't know why you would need these other two things if you're going to use correct sentence structure. What's the point? Uh, ooh. David Wynn Miller book physical copy plus one Red Fox stamp? Several editions of David's book in PDF format. Five hundred fourteen pages of five editions. Wow. They have a page in there from uh, 1980, huh? Well, ladies and gentlemen, as far as a collector of cool, rare books, that's definitely something to keep in mind. But as far as learning correct sentence structure, I don't think that would be of much help to the beginner. So we have welcome to colon David hyphen win colon Miller comma colon law hyphen claims. So we have welcome to. That is adjective pronoun in the future tense. This colon 
functions as a break in the continuance of the evidence. So David Wynn is a pronoun. Another colon, break in the continuance of the evidence. Miller, standalone pronoun. Comma, break in the continuance of the evidence. Colon, break in the continuance of the evidence. Law claims another pronoun. So then we have... What is this website about? We are more or less English teachers helping you to relearn what most of us forgot about procedure when applied to language, and in every case you were taught the wrong way to do it from the beginning. David Miller has created a mathematical formula for language. When you think about it, he has create the universal, I think they mean created, the universal key code for all languages, as you may know math on this planet is the same here as it is anywhere in the universe. How would they know that? Have they been anywhere in the universe other than here? How, how do they know that? Does not matter what planet you are on or where you are. One plus one equals two. Is that is that real? Is that correct? How? Could, wow, these people are navigating on enormous, magnanimous presumptions. We all believe and trust math because it is absolute fact. That is not true. Uh, all right, here's a psychological uh, context for you. One plus one equals two. What's the venue? What's the domain? If it's a mathematical domain of taking, uh, what can I use for an example here? I take one crystal plus another crystal, one plus one, equals two, right? That's two. Okay. Yeah, in that domain, it, it equals two. But what if you take one magnetic field and another magnetic field, and you bring them together, how many magnetic fields do you have? You have one magnetic field. So you have to specify the domain in which you are doing this using these mechanics. So this individual, whoever is writing this, is making egregious assumptions as to how that works. And with quantum grammar, that's simply something that we can't afford to do. We have to be specific. We have to be exact. Uh, you can do math frontwards and prove it backwards. Make sure you get the same answer. You can do that very same thing on this website. Take any sentence and try reading it frontwards and backwards. Doesn't matter which sentence it is on this website. It will work just like math. What are they talking about? Let me read this sentence backwards. Math like just work. Will it website this on? Is it sentence? Which matter doesn't backwards and frontwards? It reading try. and Makes no sense at all. I don't know what they're talking about. Do they think, do they actually think they're writing in correct sentence structure right now? Don't tell them. I, I don't want to disappoint them. But you can take it a step further by translating it to a different language. With translating translation using Davis procedures, you lose nothing in the translations meeting. It's missing an apostrophe there. Many may say that it is simply impossible and you cannot maintain the exact meaning of a sentence. Yes, you can. And once again, feel free to check it out as we have three languages to choose from. How was everyone taught wrong? Uh, again, I mean, I don't think people were taught wrong. They were just taught plain, simple English. That's all. They weren't taught correct sentence structure. I mean, when I went to school in the 70s, was correct sentence structure available? How do you know something is not correct when you don't know the correct thing? That makes no sense, no logical sense. Um, there are many ways to destroy a noun. Well, why wouldn't you want to destroy a noun? N-O means no and U-N means no. A noun is a no-no. It's no contract. Your first and biggest modifier is going to be an adverb, which will modify a verb. One correct sentence structure, an adverb modifies either a verb or an adjective. Period. End of story. 
The adjective is the next modifier and it will only modify a noun. In correct sentence structure, adjectives... Well, I mean, yeah. In correct sentence structure, when you're syntaxing fiction babble, it will color either another adjective or a pronoun. Now, adverbs are non-tangible contract. Adjectives are tangible contract. And for more information on that, you can check out my syntax playlist. How do prepositions and articles work? Prepositions are an assignment of authority. The assignment of authority in a preposition is going to give you your time and place. It's going to certify your time and place of what you're going to say next, which is your article, the word that will specifically command whatever the subject matter is, where you want to go. Wow, that was quite the run-on sentence there. I don't really get what they're saying, though. All 1.6 million words in the English language are fact nouns. Not correct. Taken singularly by themselves, if each word was printed by itself on a piece of paper, it would be a pronoun. Uh, to get the... We must use a preposition followed by an article. Mm. They don't destroy facts. They're modifiers. And words that can be modified are adjectives, verbs, and pronouns. That's pretty simple. What are quantums? A quantum is a three-dimensional object like a square. I wonder where they got that meaning from. Let's parse the word quantum because I bet that they didn't. So I typed in quantum. And let's find out. Some amount. As much as, so much as, how much, how far, how great an extent. See quantity. Amount, magnitude. So quantity is amount, magnitude. That which has a quantity, a concrete quantity. That's what a quantum is. A quantum is, is not a three-dimensional object. A quantum is something something of a limited concrete amount. In other words, it has closure. So quantum grammar is a grammar of closure. A quantum is a finite limit of a concrete thing. Concrete thing, I don't mean like literally port concrete. I mean solid, like it's tangible. That's what a quantum is. I, I think they need to do a little more studying in parse. As a tutor of this stuff for five years, that's my assessment. Uh, so this right here, all this stuff is kind of goofy. Uh, we won't even go into that. Let's see what else we have. Oh, here's a good one. This is another thing I wanted to go over. Why do we use the word world instead of America? Who's we, by the way? America is pronounced like this, America. I'm pretty sure, like they say it's one, two, three syllables. I'm pretty sure it's four syllables. Let's see if I'm, I'm correct. I'm just going to type in America. I was right. It is four syllables. A-mer-e-ka. So they are not correct there either. So we have A, prefix meaning no. Let's look here. Uh, well, first of all, it's a vowel in front of a consonant, so it automatically means no, and I give, go into in-depth closure on that in multiple videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, but for our purposes here, you can see here, can also represent Middle English of, off, from. That's a negation. Or Old English an, on, in, into. Those are all no contract, non-tangible. In other words, a means no. Mary, Latin meaning mercy. Is that so? Let's look. See here, I have Mary. And then I looked it up. And I don't see any Mary here. 
So then I search the exact word Mary in Latin, and it says there's no results. So where's this person's certification for Mary being Latin meaning of sheep? Or I mean Latin meaning mercy? Don't know. What I do know is when you parse the syllables, M-E-R is the syllable, not M-E-R-I. So let's look that up. To rub away, harm. Mer means to die. Okay. Let's look up I now. A connective element in many words formed with Latin or Greek suffixes now felt as part of them. Properly, it forms no proper part of the suffix, but it's often stem vowel. So it's basically a connector. Uh, perhaps we could call that a contract word. So A means no. And what did Mare mean? To rub away harm. So no. Rubbing away or harming. The contract. And then what's the last one? C-A. Scottish meaning sheep. So I look it up here and I translate it to Scottish Gaelic. Sheep means... Sh well, I'm not even going to pronounce it. But in other words, it's not C-A. So what is Scottish slang for sheep? Siora. It doesn't say C-A. It says Siora. So there is no evidence for the majority of what is being claimed here. Point B, I'm picking this stuff apart, showing you, the viewer, that these things that so many thousands of people have taken for granted and that so many gurus have regurgitated and preached by rote, just repeating what David Wynn Miller said, these things are not even correct and not certifiable. They're just not. I'm showing you that right here, right now. I'm not trying to uh, cause anybody any damage by this. This is what it means to be correct in this grammatical construct. You have to pick things apart. You have to look at things. And you have to be able to prove things. And I'm, that's what I'm doing right now. So, let's see what else we got here. Jason Brian Zelmer. Okay, is that the author of these things? Is that the author of this fictitious conveyance of grammar? Jason Brian, colon, Jason Brian, colon, Zelmer. All fives. What does he mean by that? All fives. Is he saying that Jason Brian is a five and Zelmer is a five? Does he know that a five is a positional? There are four positionals in correct sentence structure, four of, with, and by. These colons represent position lodial phrases, i.e., for the Jason hyphen Brian of the Zelmer. Jason hyphen Brian is a seven. Zelmer is a seven. It's not all fives. <laughs> My goodness. Now, with the proper punctuation, my name remains the noun and a fact. It's a no-no. This says, for the Jason Bryant of the Zelmer family. Where does he get family? Where is the word family in there? I don't see the word family in colon Jason Ivan Bryant colon Zelmer. Why do people do that? I don't understand that. Why are they ingraining an assumption into their correct sentence structure? Correct sentence structure is void of assumption presumption. And, but just so many people are just willy-nilly throwing these assumptions in here, just like this guy is. Tilde is used for all numbers that are locations. That is true, but that's not all it's used for. The tilde is used for any location. So the main thing, the main takeaway that I would like the viewer to remember is what the person, what Jason Brian Zelmer claims here. Okay, you can do that very same thing 
on this website. Take any sentence and try reading it frontwards and backwards. Doesn't matter which sentence it is on the website. It will work just like math. What in the hell are they talking about? This is adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble, BS. This entire website. Do they really think this website is in correct sentence structure? Colon Jason hyphen Brian colon Zelmer. If you're out there, if you're watching this, if you would like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, you're more than welcome to email me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen and apply for a correct grammar workshop. I will schedule a 10 to 15 minute video consultation. You can ask me anything you want to, and uh, we'll see if that's really what you want to do if you are, you know, with the volition of being correct. And that goes for everyone else out there watching this. If you want to learn it, same thing. Email me. Or, and this goes for Jason as well, you can watch the nearly or over 500 videos on my YouTube channel, which is the sum total of my correct sentence structure knowledge and my certification of my claims as correct sentence structure communication parse syntax grammar tutor. Thank you for joining me. Speaking of joining, if you'd like to join the membership, click the join button below this video and there will be two tiers of membership available. You can click on them, read the terms and conditions. Uh, tier two has access to exclusive material not available to the public. Hope you enjoyed this one. And if anybody else out there has sees any websites like this, I'd appreciate you sending them to me so that I can do a video for this and put it on the record so that I can put out and identify and credential all those landmines out there, or potential landmines that could get people in trouble. I mean, if you choose to learn from someone like that, that's your choice. Contract is by consent, it's by choice. That's your choice. I mean, go for it if that's what you want to do. But for me, I put this out there for those people who are serious and cautious and vet everything that comes through their port of sensation because that's what I do I try to certify every single thing every single claim that's made that I see I try to certify it depending upon its level of importance in my everyday practical life and that's the purpose of this reaction video yes reaction video that I'm showing that there is absolutely zero evidence that that Jason Brian Zelmer has closure on the grammar. Till next time, take care.